Hey, look who's here. Hey, Jim. You got any guitars for sale? Yeah, we got a few. This stuff, I guess, I've been doing for about the last 20 years using the reclaimed New York City wood. What does it say there? 184 Bowery, 1865, white yeah. pine. I call it the bones of old New York. Hear it? Feels yeah. comfortable. He's a good splinter guitar. <laughs> I love this guitar, Rick. It's got a great vibe. <laughs> I'll take one. All right. <laughs> anybody like you. You don't have a cell phone. You don't have the internet at your house. You need to move into the 21st century already. Why? I always really wanted to find somebody that I could pass this on to because it is sort of a lost art. What do you think about this? I think it looks good. Part of music that everybody knows, which is what winds up on the record. Yeah. You know. But then there's the invisible part of music that people don't know. And it's like everything from the people who built this guitar and all other guitars mm -hmm. to the people who create the spaces where people can hang out. It's about having a community. That's the way I feel. Do you know that they're selling the building next door? The one that Jackson Pollock used to live in? You see, they're selling it for six million. Well, if they tear it down, we'll get some wood out of it. Do you think your landlady would ever sell this building? No, I don't think so. The building's been in her family for generations, and she likes us. Wow, look how shiny it's getting. Mm -hmm. It's got the lightning bolt. Just like, oh, obviously. Like, <laughs> electricity. Lighting, yeah. You know? What's this? Get, whose yep. signature is that? That's Jeff Beck. Oh, my God. He's one of my old time idol yeah. guitar players. Yeah, well, I guess when you he was got in the yard. You got to see this. That's so cool. Yeah, I got to hold his hands. I mean, I was concerned that he may not want to give it back. You yeah. Know? <laughs> what they mean when they call it handmade. I'm sure there's a tool out there, a computer tool that does this job, but uh, this is the way I do it. It's an instrument. It's not just a guitar. It's not something made in a factory, ripped apart by machines and glued together under high tension and press. I mean, he hand files, hand works, and just finishes the guitar into itself. If you look around the store, Rick is an artist and he uses this in the medium, this medium to produce his art. The sound of the stuff he makes, and I've talked to Patti Smith and Lenny Kay and people that have his guitars, G.E. Smith, and everybody's like, this is some magical thing about the tone, the wood, the... You know, you kind of walk into this shop and it's, it's, I feel like it's one of the last kind of shops like it out there in New York, period, you know, I mean, 
you walk down the street one week and the next week it's it's all gone and it's like a Starbucks or like a, a Chipotle or whatever the hell is you know the flavor of the week is and so you come in here it's just this really it's like going back in time in my case I do a lot of reproduction guitars of like Fender Stratocaster designs that Leo Fender designed back in the late 40s I used the old method, which is what Leo Fender originally used, which was just a screwed on template. And then you follow a pin on what's called a big pin router. It's a very happy place. People come in to the shop because of the music, because of the instruments, and the freedom to sit and play and enjoy. It's a gathering place as well as it is a, uh, a shop. It's great to have her around. You know, I lost my dad about 10 years ago, and that was really hard, you know, when you lose a, a parent. You just want to see him as much as you can, so having her working here is a, a real pleasure, having her here. He has a real connection with wood. Even over here, you'll see a stack of old wood that come out of, you know, roof rafters, floor joists. The reclaimed lumber thing is something that I started actually in the very beginning from college days of going to the state parks to find the wood. But the New York City wood thing was a kind of a result of that, finding how can I get some wood pretty cheap, you know, this wood got really expensive. I knew that the earliest Telecasters were made of pine, so pine's a good wood. It's a good musical instrument wood. So I figured I'd give it a whirl, and it just worked out so well. It just sounded amazing in first try. You're dealing with wood that's from 200-year-old old-growth timber. Trees were cut down 150 years ago. They've been indoors ever since. The wood is more resonant than any other wood I've ever worked with. Now, what I was trying to illustrate there was the spank quality. You can hear that the notes that's, that's the front end attack. It's really responsive. It just, this neck just, the sound just explodes out of it. You can hear that real punch. You just don't get that in most guitars. But then I started trying to use that same wood in the necks, and no one really had done that before, and that just changed everything. It really added so much, because more than 40, 50 percent of the guitar sound comes from the neck. Uh, a lot of guitar players who are really good players, and some famous, some not, can hear that difference. You know, a musician can hear that, and so they, the orders kept coming in. <laughs> I kind of worried about the knots in the beginning and the cracks in the wood and was one of the concerns that uh, maybe people wouldn't accept it because of those. But, you know, this is here and there's not way, any other way of avoiding it, so I incorporated them. And all of a sudden, people just loved the way it looked and they called it character. Who was to know that they would love this, you know? When you make a guitar by hand, you want it to be uh, feel like an old guitar. You don't want it to feel like something plastic and new, like a new car. By leaving it a little rough and a little thin finished, it helps the sound, makes it feel better, and makes it feel like a guitar that you've already been playing for 20 years. The ones I made for Bob Dylan were, were a similar idea. He uh, used to hang out at Chumley's, which is an old speakeasy over on Bedford Street, and he wanted his guitars to definitely be Chumley's. The last one I made him, which was a telly, had the Chelsea Hotel neckwood with the Chumley's body, so they called them Chelsea Chumley's. And he loves the story of where the wood came from and the fact that he used to hang out at Chumley's and wondered in the ass yick one day if maybe some of the beer he spilt on the floor could be part of his guitar. And I said, sure, why not? Yeah.
I'm going to charge a lot more for this guitar now. <laughs> this one just went up in price. Man. It's got Bill Frizzell in there. <laughs>